In this video, I'm going to show you one of the most exciting plugin developments to have ever come to Final Cut Pro, thanks to MotionVFX. It comes in the form of a powerful plugin pack called Cine Studio. The first one being MTracker 3D, which we've all come to know and love, as well as MTracker Surface and MRoto AI. These three plugins truly set a new chapter for what is possible with video editing in both Final Cut Pro and Apple Motion, and I am so ridiculously excited that I get to show these to you. MTracker Surface is extremely easy to apply. All we need to do is locate it over here in our effects, then we can just click and apply it onto any shot that we would like. From there, you'll notice we have this toolbar that pops up. You can easily click and drag this toolbar out of the way in case you need to track something behind it. To track something, you'll notice that I first have this Bezier shape tool selected. All I need to do is click directly on my shot. I can start to create a Bezier shape. I'm gonna go ahead and just track the edge of this shirt. You will also notice that I have these powerful feathering tools on MTracker surface. So I can go ahead and just click and drag this if I need to feather a specific part of my mask. That's definitely more useful for more advanced tracks, but for this one, I don't need to do it. We also have this option to change what mode we're in. Currently, we are in planar mode. This is super handy for doing Doing screen replacements, sign replacements, but what I really want to show you is the extremely powerful mesh mode. Let's go ahead and click on this icon and you'll notice over here on the far right is mesh mode. From there, I'm going to go to the tracker and just push on this blue icon to track forward. It'll bring up this tracker window and we just have to sit and wait as it tracks through. It's actually going through quite quickly as well as you may notice. Now that it's done tracking, I can move forward in my timeline and see how the track has been applied. And you may notice if you take a look at this mesh that it's actually warping around with how the shirt moves. This is where the power of M Tracker surface comes into play. Let's say I want to place a logo on this shirt. I'll go ahead and apply a logo down onto the timeline. Then I will select the shot with the shirt and find this drop zone. Clicking on the drop zone, I can go ahead and select the face and then select apply clip. I can now hide the logo. And as you can see, the logo is already warping with the shirt. From there, we can jump inside of the image distortion tools. So I'll click on this and I will move our little taskbar here again. And now I can move this logo around as I need to. I can shrink it down by holding shift and then clicking on this corner. That will allow me to shrink it or I can increase the scale. We can also rotate it by moving it a little bit further out from that corner. We can shape it in whatever way we need to by dragging out on these sides. We can also click directly on the corner and get a nice 3D perspective to whatever object we've applied. So I could line it up really nicely with the shirt to get it looking as realistic as possible. From there, I can move to this move brush. Selecting that, I can now push around the image as I need to. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in with Command Plus and then move my window over. And at the bottom, you'll notice that I have these additional options such as smoothness, brush size, and intensity. Let's go ahead and bring my brush size down quite a bit. And if I wanted to warp the edge of this logo, I could just push on that a little bit and you can see how it's warping around, making it look much more integrated with this shirt. After that, I could even go to the bulge and pinch brush if I needed to. So if I needed to bulge a part of this logo image or shrink it down, I could do that. Now, if you're not happy with the changes you've made on a part of the brush, then you're gonna need to go over to the iron brush tool and this moves parts of the image back to their original position. You could even go down to the intensity slider and drag that way up, but I could just click and drag directly over the parts of the image that I've affected and those will go back to their original position. Next up, we can go into the image effects. This is where you're really going to integrate whatever image you've applied into your shot. So for example, we could white balance it by clicking on this icon. And when I click on that, you'll notice over here on the right hand side that has shown me the white balance tool. So I can click on this window, get my eyedropper and just find something white in the shot, which happens to be this guy's shirt. Next, we can go over to our levels. This is going to give me a black point, so I can click on that. We'll just click on our eyedropper and find something black in our shot. 
then we can go down to the white point and do the exact same thing. But we could also drop down the image opacity. So I could even fade this logo just a little bit by bringing down the opacity or we could apply a blend mode, for example, something like the overlay blend mode and now it looks super integrated into the shot. Next, we can go ahead and enable stuff like blur. So if you had a slight blur onto your shot because it was out of focus, this is what you would want to enable. But then after that, we have motion blur, and this is going to make it look so much more realistic because it's going to apply natural motion blur onto your scene. If you want to, you can adjust the motion blur levels over here on the right hand side. You could enable a drop shadow if you wanted to. And over here next to that is the light wrap tool. I love this tool. This really integrates stuff perfectly into your shot because it's going to bring in a little bit of the color from the edges over the edges of your image. And finally, at the very end is the grain tools. We can enable this and this is again going to integrate your image so much better with your shot because you can match the natural grain of your camera into your tracked scene. So playing back, we can see how natural this looks to the scene. It looks so three dimensional and as if it was actually stitched on that shirt. So this tool is extremely powerful and absolutely melts my mind with the kind of results you can get. Mroto AI is ridiculously easy to use. All you need to do is click and drag it onto whatever shot you want to rotoscope. Then from there, it again gives you this toolbar. You have the ability to add on your roto or you can erase from your roto. I'm gonna go ahead and just click and drag over the area that I want to rotoscope. And what's powerful about this is it works with any object. You're not just stuck to one specific person. So I'll go ahead and just make a ridiculous shape here and I can go ahead and get it down here in the bottom as well as clean up the edges up here on the shape of our mountain. I got a little bit too much of the mountains in the background, so I'll go ahead and just select the eraser tool and clean up that edge. And just like that, we have selected all of our rotoscoped area. From there, all I need to do is just click on the tracker and track forward. You'll see how fast it is rotoscoping out this entire shot. It is tracking with our person walking while maintaining a really clean edge here at the bottom. It's not selecting the mountains in the background. So Mroto AI went through and tracked everything that I need to. Now all I need to do is change this over to the masked mode. Currently the output is set to merged. We can go ahead and just set that over to masked video and we can see what kind of cutout we have on our object. You'll also notice that playback is extremely fast. So it looks like the edge is just a little bit messy on our person walking. That's because they are wearing all black and the edges behind it were white, but that is a super easy fix. We can go over here and adjust stuff like the smoothness of the roto. We can also shrink and expand it. So I'm just gonna shrink it just a few pixels and we have completely cleaned up that edge. Now all I need to do is change out this background to look however I want. And that is where M-Tracker 3D comes into play, which is also included with Cine Studio. There are many tutorials already on how to use M-Tracker 3D, and since it's been out for a while, I'm not gonna cover how to do that in this tutorial, but I am gonna show you what using these plugins in tandem can do for you. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a drop zone from M-Tracker 3D's amazing library that it comes included with, and up here in the top right-hand corner, I'll go ahead and disable the animation in and animation out. I'm also going to paste the track that I got from my previously tracked footage so that my drop zone lines up with everything that I need. After that, I'll go ahead and select my drop zone and choose the image that I want as a background. Now to really showcase this point, I'm gonna go ahead and just set it as a cityscape and push apply clip. Then I'm gonna go ahead and scale up the content quite a bit and bring it down in the Y axis. And just like that, I've done a complete sky backdrop replacement with very advanced masks very, very quickly, all completely inside a Final Cut Pro. So hopefully this gives you an idea of the sheer amount of power included with Cine Studio. You have M-Tracker Surface, which gives you an extremely accurate track on any surface that you want. You have M-Tracker 3D, which allows you to add 3D text or completely new backgrounds. And with all of that, you also have Mroto AI, which I believe is going to completely change the game for Final Cut Pro editors. I do have affiliate links down below so you can get a little bit more information on Cine Studio. Plus there is a 14 day free trial 
for anybody who wants to check out these tools for themselves. Thank you again Motion VFX for sponsoring this video. If it was helpful to you in any way, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may want to check out this video where I show you how to use MTracker 3D to create some really cool portal effects inside of Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.